Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and I'm really excited to be able to show you what I've been up to recently, and that is learning how to pick the Multi-Lock Classic. Um, this has been a, a challenge for me, um, and it, it's really been enjoyable. So what is a Multi-Lock Classic? That's the one with, uh, a con it's a dimple lock, um, with a configuration of pins that they are five pin-in pins. Um, that means that you've got uh, five uh, key pins and driver pins, um, that have an outer pin uh, which is sort of like a hollow tube with an inner pin on the inside so essentially you've got 10 pins to pick um, and again they, they have their own challenges now you'll see that I've got two keys of different bittings why well this is a threaded multi-lock classic um, and I want to thank Pete Russell a, a great deal for doing that. So he's basically threaded the chambers with these um, grub screws. And that allows me to um, have uh, two different bittings in the same lock, which is excellent for practice. Um, there we go. And it turns that side. Uh, you'll also notice that these uh, keys have little uh, dimples on the side. Those are passive key control pins. So um, uh, you've got to be careful. Uh, with those uh, as I found out. So I managed to get two uh, multi-lock classics, gut them, uh, uh, re-do uh, these two sides to allow me to um, uh, have a, basically a double-ended practice multi-lock. How cool is that? So um, if you look at these keys um, you'll see some features which I have to get past. Um, so you can see that you have some outer larger circles and you have some inner um, little dots so the inner dots or dimples are actually for the inner pins. They're, they're quite small, about, uh, I think, around a millimetre, slightly less than a millimetre in diameter. And the outer pins are slightly wider, um, somewhere around three or four millimetres. Um, now, this side is actually a lot easier to pick. Uh, and why? Well, if you look, the inner dimples are all lower than the outer um, edge. That means that you only need to pick the outer edge and then just tickle the tops of these pins and it opens. This is the side I'll be picking today for you. Um, and this is a little bit harder. Why? Well, look at these, um, well, look at the bitting. So first of all, if you turn to the edge, you can see that we have a, um, a really long, really long um, key pin in position three, which protects four and five. And uh, in front of it, you've got um, a very, very short key pin, which needs to lift all the way up. Not only that, you've got a um, a very cheeky pin um, in pin, well, the, the inner pin, pin key pin one. If you can see, it's raised by about a millimeter high. That means that you need to push the inner pin lower or higher, depends which way you look at it, but you know inside the outer pin. So it brings you on to how to pick this. Um, I'll be picking it with my a Z wrench here and that just goes in there and that acts as a guide for my flat flag so I'm using a flat flag and what that will do is it'll allow me to just go in there and do that properly you go in there and pick the let me try and get a focus to lock on there for you Go in there and I'll be able to pick the outer pin like this and it won't go near the inner pin. If I want to pick the inner pins, I flip it upside down and I go in at the top and use that angle to pick the inner pins there. So that was quite clever. For the pin which needs to be lifted um, higher or within the outer pin, then I'm using a curved dimple flag like this. Now this uh, was a tip from Pete Restall again um, on how to do that. So this is a curved modified um, dimple flag which it allows me to go in and just hook inside. Um, you can probably just about see it there but I can hook inside the outer pin and push the inner pin further down. Um, there's no other way to really do it other than to have a modified curved flag. So this was a you know it's not a, a, a simple um, easy multi-lock classic I hope you appreciate so I'll try to find one to practice on which will give me a challenge I'm going to grab a vice I'm going to um, uh, load all this up and we'll get 
a pick and a gut on the way. Gutting, of course, will be a bit easier because I will be able to do that by just undoing the grub screws. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we've got tension with a, a Z wrench in at the warding and just going to try and find the first binder, which I believe is pin five. I'll click on five. Four. Four, five, four, three's heavily bound, so I'll leave three alone. Uh, uh, one wants to go. Counter rotation and click, good. Two, yeah, click on two. I think it'll drop one. Got one, uh, good. Now I'm just going to turn the pick over and go in to see um, if I pick some of the inner pins at the same time. So one, two. Now three is a bit of a pain to get the pick past, so I'm going to have to be very wiggly and jiggly and hope for the best. I'll try the other side. I think we've got it. Let's go in to the back. So five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, let's try those outer pins again. Okay, so I think we're on one, little click, two, little click. Uh, Three, we're good. Okay, now I might need to swap picks over for a second. Get my little curved hook and just try to get the inner pin on pin one. Not ready to go yet. Okay, so back to the back. Try to pick those little inner pins at the rear. So five. Four, three, two, and one to one again. Turn over, let's try the outer pin. So one, two. Ah, into a deeper full set, that's a good sign. Uh, one needs to be set again. Yep, we're good. But now the inner pin definitely needs to go. I think. Swap over again. Where's that little inner pin pick? Ah, yes, we picked that one. Okay, good. So that was the inner pin on pin one. Um, pin two is definitely picked. Let me go right to the back and see if there's any of those little uh, pins that need picking. So uh, I've got inner pin on pin two that needs to be picked. And definitely on probably five and four again. Try those actual pins. Sometimes you, yeah. Just need to check every pin in turn. Pin two again. Yep, yeah, good. Got pin two. So we can see they're in a very deep full set now. So it just needs to tickle some pins at the back, I believe. And we've got an open, there we go. So, um, what I need to do now is just take that for, uh, autofocus off and we'll try to get a gutting for you. Now, uh, 
I don't have my uh, pinning set out to hand because I'm an idiot, uh, but I shall get it out now. And let's see where we get to. So I've got to keep this in camera. Um, or oh, what I might do is actually just lock it up. So we've got an open, I'll lock it back up and we'll get the actual key and I'll show you the bitting. So this one is quite tough. Um, uh, so you can see here we've got at the back some pins with the um, outer needs to be set lower than the inner. Then we've got sort of a neutral pin uh, at pin three, but uh, if you can imagine just how um, high that pin is inside, it's very hard to get past, really is. Then you've got one which needs to be pushed almost all the way in, and again with the outer, the inner pin just being set a little higher. And then we've got that really awkward pin where we have um, an inner pin which needs to be set almost a millimeter lower than the outer pin. The only way to do that is by using um, a tool like this, and Pete Restall, uh, go check out his channel, uh, gave me that tip where you get a curved um, dimple flag and you make it so you can just curve in over the top of the pin and just get into the center and pick that uh, pin itself. Anyway, enough of me uh, waffling on. Let me get this lock out the vise and um, put that down. Uh, and let's show. Get all picks everywhere as well. Let's just show this uh, actually working. There we go. So, works very smoothly actually. Now, the one good thing about this is that um, this lock has been made with grub screws. So this makes gutting this so, so much easier. Here we go. So. Um, I'll dump the grub screws into this nice long bit here and put the spring uh, at the top and then what we'll do is we will just gently tip out the um, spool, it was a slightly spooled um, driver. We had a little, I don't know if you saw, a little wafer pop out this was a master keyed um, lock, so there's a little wafer that sits there um, on top of this solid steel driver pin. So let's pop that and the wafer in there. Then what else do we have? Let's take this next one out. Chamber four. Again, spring. Um, so the last one wasn't spooled actually, that was a standard, I'll, I'll show you them later, but that is definitely a spool um, driver pin, we've got definitely some pin in pin action there. Uh, then we got, come on, don't be shy, there we go. Then we got the driver, the key pin, sorry, and that's its uh, inner pin in there, so there we go. So that's a... Uh, that's that one, so what else? Oh, throw my lock away. Oh, they're dropping everything everywhere. Oh. Uh, so what did we get out of there? I'm missing a key pin. There we go. So we have another in uh, position three, uh, another ball driver, and another nice, um, I like these uh, uh, multi-lock key pins, you know, they, they have that really nice kind of, um, they've got everything you don't want, they, they've got a, a sort of a beveled edge which catches if you overset it, um, it's got um, a serration at the bottom, it's like a mushroom spool shape, they're really horrid really horrible pins. Um, you know, there's a reason why multi-lock have got the reputation they have for being high security. Uh, locks are difficult to pick. Um, it's taken me a while to learn this one, I have to say. Uh, but I look forward to more. Is there an interesting lock with really interesting feedback? Okay, so again, we've got um, yet another spool driver pin. And Another nice pin in pin keeping. 
and again, it's that, that wonderful kind of uh, multi-lock shape. Um, it, it hasn't got the uh, the mushroom uh, and beveled edge, but it has got the serration on the tip. And last but not least, pin one. This is the one which is uh, really awkward and you have to set the key pin, sorry, the inner uh, pin lower than the outer pin, which is a real pig. There we go. So that's another spool driver. And I'll try to rescue that inner pin, inner key pin. Trouble with springs, here we go. And quite a long pin, this one. And again, it's got that lovely kind of like a um, uh, mushroom shape to it uh, with its beveled edge and its serration. Uh, what a pin. Okay, so let me bring these a little closer up for you so you can see. So uh, briefly, you have in, uh, well, let's do key pins first. Pin in pin, sort of a, a, a bevel serrated mushroom, sort of a more standard serrated key pin in two, uh, that wonderful multi-lock uh, bevel serrated mushroom thing in uh, three and four, then a standard, thankfully, with a little wafer on top um, in five. And then all the rest are uh, really nice long spools. Um, there we go, really nice long spools with a standard pin um, just there. You'll also notice that you've actually got um, some little serrations on the tips of one, um, three and five uh, inner driver pins and that is designed specifically to catch up in um, a undercutting in the pins in the same chambers below. So they've got undercutting, they've got serrations, bevels, mushrooming, uh, uh, I mean just everything, everything they can throw at us to uh, you know make us feel bad. Um, but there we go, so that was uh, my first multi-lock um, classic picked on camera. I hope you enjoyed that, um, and I will see you next time.